Welcome to My Existential Crisis, the podcast where we talk about all the things that make us question our entire sense of self. My name is Madison Epley. I'm Haley Guffrey. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Jared Shark. I knew that was going to happen. I felt yeah. it in my bones. <laughs> I knew it was going to happen, too. And happy like, one year anniversary kind of, of our existential crises. Thank you for listening oh, shoot, for an really? entire year. Yeah, that's what we're doing this, Jared. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. I had no idea. I'm so sorry. Jared, well, I miss if you. If it's news to Jared. I miss you too. Are you doing anything to celebrate Haley? To celebrate what? The one year anniversary. Oh. For fuck's sake. <laughs> Hello? Uh, probably not. This. Cool. I had chicken broccoli alfredo that I made, homemade last night. It was better the second time, leftover. And I'm having an angry orchard because I never really drink. And oh, mm, nice. it's okay. I got a salad from Wendy's. Yo! Let's get it. <laughs> let's go. I had five guys earlier. <laughs> the, five I would cause that yeah, celebration. That's, that's legit. That is celebratory. You don't you don't get like a twenty dollar cheeseburger just God, any they're random so expensive. day of the week. I remember yeah, one so time funny. I was working at the movies and I had my coworker, she was going on break and I said, will you please go get me a Five Guys burger? She said, do you want one or two? And I handed her a $20 wow. bill and I said, if there's enough money there to get me two cheeseburgers, then sure. Oh, baby girl, no. This is, oh, baby girl, I didn't no. know how expensive they were. She came back with literal <laughs> pennies. I was so confused. I was like... It's like... This is it. How am I supposed to get home on the bus? This is pennies. <laughs> I was like, Kate, what happened? Where did we go wrong? And she said, you told me Five if there guys. was enough to get you two to get you two. Yeah. It used and to be like, such a great country. I wonder how much did Five Guys used to cost in the golden ages of like the 80s? Um, like $7 for a cheeseburger. But now it's close to 10 for like just a normal one. But yeah, you have to get pricey. fries and a drink with that kind of meal. So then oh, do you really? just eating by yourself, you have to. It's five guys, burgers, and fries. I can't have their oh. fries. I don't like oh, their fries. Oh, because peanuts, that's yeah. right. I heard about that I just, I don't on have the last excuse. episode. That's really upsetting. <laughs> Isn't it? My life is sad. Yeah. And bananas also? Hello? I don't, right? what I the don't fuck is like them. I'm not allergic to them. I'm, I just don't like them. Yeah, but it's Levi an issue. Levi loves bananas. Everybody loves Levi bananas. Levi is smart. Levi gets it. Everybody loves bananas. <laughs> I'm know. sure I loved bananas too when I was like one. I think maybe you just gotta, you have, you need to have like a second awakening or something. Oh no, I had I a banana. So I tried a banana again not that long ago because I was on a, oh my God, sorry. There was a person walking down the alley and it scared me. Are you going to be okay? There's lots of things that <laughs> yeah, are like coming after so you. Many things things that are... Don't say that. Don't phrase you, it like that. You said that there was something <laughs> uh, like moving behind you. There's people walking I'm on your street. Sure, like... it was my dog. And I'm sure that that person was also just walking a dog. It's just a big mm. fear of mine to look out the window and see something in the alley. That's a very um, natural fear, I think. Yeah. Like, I love taking a nap on our couch, but we have a huge picture window. And it is a genuine, oh. like, I am so afraid of falling Pardon asleep me? on that couch. We're getting them. We don't have okay. them yet, though. But I have a genuine fear of falling asleep on that couch and waking up to something. And it's a second story window, but it doesn't matter. I have a fear that it I'm going to look out like, it and there's going to be something there. there. Yeah, legitimately. Oh, you know what? Have you, have either of you seen From? It's a show. No, but I just on, heard about um, it today. It's so I good. I have not. It's so good. Check it out. I won't talk about it, but it's great. Okay, it's so you're spooky. just gonna say it's, it's very free, in and then season. Just like... Okay, okay, all right. I won't yeah, no. That. Why would I? I'm not gonna ruin it for anybody. Okay, I didn't. I wasn't asking you to ruin it. I was asking. It's also I mean, you gave me what I wanted. <laughs> you said spooky. It's me. hard to describe. <laughs> also, it's like a, um, it's like a mind fuck kind of show. Like a black so, mirror type of thing. No. It's more just like weird stuff constantly happens with little to no okay. explanation. Okay, I'm but down it's with good. that. Like I it's like very good mindfuck. structured. Yeah, it's good. Hulu. I would enjoy that. Hulu? Good to know. I will mm -hmm. put that on my list and then watch Bob's Burgers for the hundredth time. It's a great show. I have to send it you guys a, a picture of the show. puzzle we did. It's hanging in our bathroom. 
Yes. What is it? Well, I don't have. It's just a picture of. It's it's like Wonder Wharf themed. <gasps> so like Yo! all the characters are at Wonder Wharf. <laughs> I love that. Is it like a Where's Waldo type of thing? No, it's just like they're all there doing like carnival things. Like there's a roller coaster. Aww. Linda's got a giant butt in like the Hall of Mirrors. It's great. Mm-hmm. As I get older, I am becoming more of a Linda. Yes. She's a great yes. character. I, I Christian never hates her. That you weren't a Linda. <laughs> I always thought I was in a the, Tina. In the best way possible. No, I think that you'd, you've grown out of your Tina phase. I would say middle oh, yeah. school Haley was Tina. I would say definitely now you're a Linda. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Now I was we were I was doing something at, at the Walmart, the Walmart whatever. Doing Walmart. something at Walmart and and I referred Walmart oh, World. it was these it's these deer because they have the Christmas stuff out now of course, but it's these little oh God, deer it. figurines, and I'm walking by and I'm obsessed with them. They're glittery and they're cute and they're <gasps> perfect. Yo, and I'm glitter. walking around and i'm talking about how badly i want these deer and i'm like they're my little babies and then i stopped and thought for a moment and i was like oh god that's such a i said that's a real like i can see myself becoming linda with like her her collection yes of course can we just wait until the holidays are in like done in sequential order to start putting out the christmas decorations yes but also no that Here takes away thing. from my enjoyment of Halloween. No, but hear me out. Just don't look at it. If I'm like, it. if I'm in the mood for like scary movies and apple cider and fall weather, leaves crunching underfoot, and I start seeing like Kris Kringle everywhere, that like ruins it for me. I'm like, let me be scared and spooked for a little but bit before we start getting into that. Or imagine Santa as what he really is and he's a stop Krampus because he sees you when you're sleeping mm-hmm. and he knows when, he you're, knows awake. when you're awake that's fucking terrifying okay. <laughs> i hate to break it to you madison and for don't, all of your listeners don't say it don't you don't you dare fucking say it santa claus don't is just a commercial excuse <sighs> he said it to buy things he said it and he's also Excuse not me? real ah Excuse that's the one. me Okay, you're just a hater. You're a non-believer. And that's fine, Jared. <laughs> that just means that he doesn't care about you when it comes to Christmas. But I love um, every other aspect of the holidays, but Santa can go kick rock. Are, so is, is Levi not going rock. to have Santa? I don't know yet. I don't want to lie You know, lie honestly, to that's, that's kind of where I'm at, to be quite frank. I'm with you because I wasn't mad whenever I found out. I, I knew Santa wasn't real deep in my heart. <laughs> Yeah. But I was really, really angry that I was lied to. And that was what I held yeah. on to for the longest. And that's why I wanted it to be true. Because I wanted my parents to look me in the eye and tell me that it isn't <laughs> true. And that's what fucked me up. Meanwhile, yeah. I'm going to lie to my children about so many things. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to be a great mom. Like what? Yeah, it's going to be great. Did you say like what? Yeah, I said like what? What are you going to lie to your kids um, about? I saw someone say that they blame Jeff Goldblum for everything. Oh, no, not Jeff. Like, <laughs> Don't blame Jeff. Like, no, or- we can't stay up and watch another episode or Jeff Goldblum will eat you. Like, stuff like That's that. Hilarious. Fuck. <laughs> like, That's like, something awful. like that. Or like, I love that, actually. <laughs> I hate like, it. I'm trying to remember a specific... Can you blame, like, like, an actually bad person, though, instead of Jeff Goldblum? Oh, yeah, I'm not going to blame Jeff Goldblum. I feel like that's Bloom, even worse, somebody. though, because then you're, like, thinking that that person is going to come in when they're sleeping and hurt them. Well, I mean, <laughs> that's, what a, that's what a boogeyman is. At least I'm making my boogeyman fun. Yeah, make a it a different fuck- boogeyman. No, no, no. I was afraid. I'm still afraid of the dark. I can't condone that. Or like, I'm going to tell them. I saw someone say that um, the playground closes at two, and the children oh, that are still on the okay. playground after two live there in the afternoon. Yes. Oh. What? Well, kind I wouldn't of say that they live there. Demented playground closes that early. I don't know the one that I. It doesn't. That's the joke. <laughs> That's the lie. The playground okay. doesn't close at two, but. Like toddlers don't know that. See, I yeah. would lie. The if kids it was that like, are still there after the two just home. live there. <laughs> it's like, hey, 
Yeah, what see, it's like that. <laughs> We're trespassing. That's okay. <laughs> like, I'm not going to lie to my kids just for fun. I'm not just going to sit I there thought and you be were like, saying. hey, you know it would be That's really what... funny yeah. right now? <laughs> no, I'm going That's to, like... <laughs> It's like that whole thing that's like, oh, if you eat carrots, you'll be able to see in the dark. That kind of thing. You never heard that? I mean, carrots help your development of vision. Oh, yeah. I heard once when I was little that uh, carrots will give you night vision. Vitamin. It's called vitamin C because it helps you see. That's a lie. (laughs) I'm pretty sure. That's not real. It's not the actual vitamin. See, See, kids get lied to all the time. And I'm gonna be, I, I'm gonna be the mom that's like, I'm going all out for. I was just talking to Christian about how I can't wait for us to have kids, so that way around Christmas I can just go nuts. I can go nuts now, but I can go even further nuts. Mm-hmm. I used to, whenever before my sister had her baby, I'm not blame. I love my, I love Lorelai to death. But before Paige had Lorelai, I was like, I had baby fever like crazy, and I was like, listen, I know. I cannot, I should not have a baby, but I could have a baby and be so happy right now. Now, I don't know, literally the moment she told me she was pregnant, that thought just like flew out of my brain and it has not come back. (laughs) And I kind of feel sad about that. Like I, I I always, I still want to have kids. I think I do. This got deep. I didn't mean. Listen. Kids are great. It's pretty cool. That's all I'm going to say. It's going to be that's the thing like it's awesome like like watching Lorelai grow up is nuts Paige will send me videos of like last year and she was just a little baby and now she's walking yeah. and like babbling and it's nuts oh I just love her so much I honestly what scares me is I don't know if my heart can take it whenever they start getting older because even just Lorelai like it's like both the best and the worst thing in the world like it's just it's yeah. like this is fantastic but also like and then there's Levi. He's just yeah, got those chubby I was just going to say, you mentioned how you can't imagine like watching them grow up because then you're it's living like you don't it. get to have that little stage. I'm living it, Madison. You're it's living insane. it, Jared. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's, it's great. No, it don't seems be sorry. Great. It seems fantastic. Like, ah, uh, every time yeah. I see Levi and his chubby little cheeks. No, it's definitely really, cheeks. it can be really challenging and frustrating at times, but it's so worth it, you know? Uh, That's all I'm going to say. I love that. Look at us, guys. We went to, yeah. in case nobody knew, we went to high school together. <laughs> we all did we theater, went, too. We, we yeah. did. We went to college together or adjacent to each other. I was going to say, not me. No, but you were adjacent. Yes, I was adjacent. I still think it's really funny that the... So, Madison and Jared's college would do this thing where they would write... Like, the writing classes would write a play, and then the theater majors would perform it and, like, direct it and whatever. And I... So, they did... They would pick three shows... Mm-hmm. And one of them was a one-man show starring Jared. It was great. <laughs> I know, just didn't do it. You didn't do it? Oh, wait, are you talking about Funeral in the Rain? Yeah, I think so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or no, hey. no, yours was camping. Camping? What? Yeah, you went camping. I don't remember the not, the title of it, but I do remember that now. Okay, cool. Um, But I thought it was so funny because I did not... Me and this other kid did not go to Jared and Madison's college, but we were allowed to audition anyway. <laughs> and this kid and I both landed, like, both the of the leads <laughs> in the two other shows. You were the best. <laughs> you were the best. Yeah. And I still think about that every once in a while. I'm reminded it was somehow. So good. And I just Ugh. chuckle. I wish I'm I had a like, video of those. Yeah, you did at one point. Don't yeah, know where I know. it went. I don't know. I, don't I think, know what I think you cleared it, it when you deleted all your the stuff. The UPJ theater archives are a very disheveled mess. I, yes. I, there's so much footage that they probably filmed that I have no access to for, like, if I wanted to build a portfolio. Like, I remember that one yeah. collection of things that we did. And <gasps> yes, I did that Spoon cool River. freaking match trick. Yes! Because I was a freaking pyromaniac. And I was like, oh, that'd be so cool if I could show that to, like, I don't know, classes or yeah. schools or something. And I don't know where it is. 
It just never got made. It never got made it's in no. the E3. <laughs> I'm so gone. pissed. I was so upset. <laughs> they just did Trail to Oregon. I'm I'm mad about that. Yeah. Oregon Trail. Well, that was a student run thing. Trail to Oregon. It's, a it's like an Oregon mm-hmm. Trail musical. I love that. I <laughs> like love that theme. musical so much. I've it's always like wanted to do it. B C list musical, and that's not dissing it. That's just like saying it's very unknown. It's more like. Yeah, no. I have it's, a confession it's... to make. What's I'm a. Head? I think I'm a fake fan of theater. So okay. why do you say that? I haven't seen because I haven't seen a lot of like the I, classics. Okay. I would say that. I wouldn't call yourself a fake fan. I think theater and music. I'm not saying that Trail to Oregon is a classic. But, you know, <laughs> I haven't seen As a Wicked. Classic. I haven't seen Lion King. I haven't seen uh, Hamilton or, you know. I love musical theater. I just haven't yeah. seen anything. Or even traditional okay. theater I haven't really I seen don't... much. See, this is me getting on it. I don't think that that's necessarily you being a fake fan. I think it's more that theater especially musical theater is so like i don't know how to phrase it's not what i'm inaccessible trying to say. but like it's 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 pretty inaccessible like i the first time i went to see the first time it was in school when we went on a school trip mm-hmm. that's the first time i went to see a show and now that i'm a grown-up i just do it whenever i want but it's so expensive it's so far away it has to mm-hmm. be either touring in your town or you have to travel far to get it so yeah inaccessible seems like a good word i will take that back. It, and it and it is and it's a shame like I feel like there are so many, it sucks, because especially when something wins big, like Hadestown swept the Tonys that year. Yeah. And it jumped in price because suddenly everybody wanted to see it because it won the Tonys, and not because they had, like, there's a problem with people wanting to see things just to say that they saw it, like Hamilton. Yeah. Like, oh, I saw Hamilton. It's like, okay, but did you actually care? I would yeah. care. I listened to Hamilton for a class, and the I class. didn't really care for it. And that's fine. I'm I'm just using Hamilton as an example. But I also I don't really I hate history. I'm really bad at history. And I I, hate I it. know. So we were in the same history I class. I would probably not enjoy it. I also hate history. But I, maybe I'll give it a try. He hated me. Who hated you? <laughs> he, hated me. he didn't like me either it's okay <laughs> well I, I to be fair i definitely I definitely skipped class a couple times and i'm not one to skip class but i was so busy and i was so Here's tired and thing. i was so stressed <laughs> i tried so hard in that class I know michael <laughs> would show me his quiz like after he finished like those 10 question quizzes yeah and he was like just just look at it just <laughs> I didn't pass, dude. And I was like, no, I have integrity. I'm not going to look at that. And then I ended up getting a one out of ten. <gasps> no, Jared. Wait, Jared. I'm stupid. Did you <laughs> not have history. the quiz? Wait, Jared, did you not have the quizzes ahead of time? No. Jared! Oh, my gosh. About? Jared, I would have also gotten a one had I not. Jared. Okay, <laughs> so. Ugh. They. Yes, absolutely. I, I refuse to cheat. Failed. So still... prior classmen from like years and years, he just reused the same tests. So they would keep oh, so they would the just tests like pass and you had like down. an A test and a B <laughs> test. Yes, you'd pass them down. So my sister who was in class before she got tests passed down for her. Then she passed them down to me. And there was like only two times where the tests were not the same and i bombed those <laughs> but like yeah i jared i, w- I would have helped you i would have given you the test it wouldn't have mattered i guarantee it, it would not <laughs> have know, changed jared. anything <laughs> Ugh. oh damn yeah I, I i hate history i i don't know who the fucking i don't know i don't give a shit who cares who the 13th president was like I'm living in the now, you know. <laughs> the here and now, man. I'm living in the. Why present. does that even? I'm a forward-thinking individual. Me. 
So are you guys ready for my story? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So it's a wild one. So fasten your seatbelts. It's in. Have you? Okay. Wild, have wild, you seen wild. um the basically? Yeah. Basically. Have you seen um the Stefan sketches from SNL? A couple. Stefan sketches. Yeah, like uh, Bill Hader as Stefan, and he's oh, like that character. he's like the yeah, he's like okay. yeah, like this place has everything, and then he'll go mm-hmm. and talk about everything that it has, and it's like a one-legged man with a bowl cut or whatever. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that's how I feel about this story. Man with the it's bowl got cut. everything. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but that's the story. It's literally got everything. Are you ready? I it's have got the mental a image cult. of the gif in my mind. <laughs> Small town USA, bioterror attacks, witness protection, a bombing, murder, sex, Jeez. and an abstinence-based Christian youth camp. Let's dive oh, in. God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it all started with a man named Osho in India, and he was the eldest of 11 children in 1931. He lived with his grandparents until he was eight. And by his own account, this was a major influence on his development because they let him do pretty much whatever he wanted to do. He wasn't forced to go to school or do chores or really anything. He just kind of lived a very carefree, willy-go-nilly life. Well, after his grandfather died, he was sent back to live with his parents and they tried to force him back into this normalcy. Um, And because he was like, no he said no and he was always very rebellious in school and at home and he always tried to argue and debate his way out of or into anything um and from a very young age osho was very critical of traditional religion and took an interest in different ways to expand the consciousness like yogi exercises breath control fasting meditation the occult hypnosis etc He also took um, a very great interest in the writings from Marx and Engels, which obviously labeled him as a communist, and um, he was threatened with expulsion in school. But with the help of his friends, because we all need those good friends, he built a small library of communist literature and formed a group where they could regularly discuss this ideology and their opposition to traditional religion. So now we're going to fast forward to 1951, Osho is now 19 years old, and he was expelled from college after becoming (laughs) argumentative with his professor. He then transferred to another college, and again, because of his argumentativeness, uh, he was told that he didn't have to go to classes. He was just like, please just stay home and don't come anymore. Um, You can just come to the exams. So that's what he did, Uh, and that's how he passed. (laughs) So despite his parents... Yeah, go for it. Sorry. So was he like argumentative in the sense that he was, was it a constructive argument like most colleges are meant to encourage or was it just like, you're wrong and here's why and I don't want to hear any other opinion? No, I would say it was, it was constructive and I'll get into this a little bit later, but basically, um, I mean, if you can think about it today, being radical in political Mm -hmm. or religious beliefs is kind of taboo but especially in like the 30s and 50s even over in india it was still very taboo to go against hinduism go against anything that was conservative or culturally normative um so yes it was like him trying to have those discussions but the government and the professors were like no we're okay you just yeah i guess that makes sense don't do that yeah Okay, so despite his parents' pressure, he refused to marry and went on to get his master's degree in philosophy and eventually found a teaching position. However, this position was short-lived because he was asked to resign for being a, quote, threat to students' morality, character, and religion. Again, the same type of things. It's not cool. I don't agree with this. Um, but that's that's just the way that it was. He was really admired as a distinguished professor, and his peers called him a gifted, emotionally intelligent man who overcame the deficiencies of his early small town education. Around this time, after he left his teaching, he changed his name from Osho to Rajneesh, and that's now how I'm going to refer to him from now on. 
he began going around and giving lectures, which were very critical of socialism, very critical of Gandhi and institutionalized religions in general. And just a fun fact, he traveled so much to give these lectures that he actually had a hard time sleeping on real beds because he was used to sleeping on rocking train cars. Um, now, I don't need to go into like all of his beliefs, but I'll just cover the main principles because it is actually very forward thinking, especially for the time. And honestly, I can get behind a lot of it. So he thought Indian religions and other organized religions were full of empty rituals, oppressing followers through threats of damnation and promises of false blessings. He thought Gandhi, he considered him a masochist who worshipped poverty. He was a very staunch believer that India needed to escape its backward thoughts of capitalism. Uh, sorry, its backward thoughts with capitalism, science, modern technology, and birth control. Again, this is in the 50s. Uh, mm -hmm. He didn't think of capitalism and socialism as opposites, but he thought of socialism as an ultimate result of capitalism. And he thought that women and people in lower classes were being treated like animals. Um, so again not I, I yeah i get this That's i get it i get behind solid, this uh, mindset i know right <clears throat> uh and these these are still things that are considered con controversial today so especially in the 50s this was insane um but it gained him a very loyal following from a number of wealthy merchants and businessmen People reached out to him for individual spiritual consult consultations in return for donations, which grew his practice. And finally, in 1968, he created a lecture series called From Sex to Superconsciousness, which was incredibly scandalous, clearly, as it called for a much more acceptance of sex in general. And he soon became known as the sex guru in Indian newspapers. So now what we're going to talk about the Ash. I know, right? The sex guru. <laughs> so um, Rajneesh spent the years 1971 through 1974 in Mumbai. And during this, t this time, he started a method which he called dynamic meditation, which involved breathing fast and celebrating with music and dance. He had groups of disciples and Westerners who were interested in his teachings. And he, I, I do want to mention that he himself wasn't to be worshipped, but he was more just like an agent and supposed to be helping others in their spiritual journeys. And the core of Rajneesh's philosophy emphasized that in order to know the truth, one had to first sati satiate every repressed desire as it arose. Um, and I'll go into a little bit more about what that meant. But I do want to mention that he was in poor health. The humid climate of Mumbai caused him a lot of health problems, um, such as asthma, a variety of allergies, diabetes. He had joint pain. Uh, and But overall, like he was doing well besides his health ailments. And things started to ramp up with his ashram when he purchased a property and turned it into this this place, this physical ashram for his disciples. And it was six houses, two acres large, and it was equipped for mass production of their beliefs for like audio and video recording and printing so that they could get the word out. And Westerners continued to pour in. Um, the ashram featured an arts and crafts center that made clothing, jewelry, ceramics, cosmetics, and they even hosted theater and music performances. Like this seems like the place to go. be. I know, right? Like, I want to be here. Yeah. Um, if it's too good to be so true, it is. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're just getting there. <laughs> <laughs> so this was called the, the Poon, I think it's Poon, P-U-N-E, Poon Ashram, which was, an, it was uh, described as an exciting, emotionally intense place to be with a, quote, madhouse carnival-like atmosphere. And so remember the dynamic meditation that he created? Well, they mm -hmm. started the day off every day at 6 a.m. with this meditation. And what this was, a little, a little bit more specificity, was an hour-long practice, which would be divided into five parts. Participants would exhale in a chaotic manner for 10 minutes, which would then be followed by a total catharsis. They were then asked to release feelings and emotions by singing, shouting, dancing, kicking, and laughing. And then following this, they'd have to jump up and down 
and then stay frozen for several minutes to understand the depth of their emotions until the reality of their surroundings came back into focus. And then they'd break out into dance. And that's, that would give me a panic that's attack. What dyna- <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> that that's is way what too dynamic much meditation is. Such a short amount of time. That's I'm sorry, but no so thanks. So much. <laughs> uh, so that was at 6 a.m. Um, and then at 8 a.m. <laughs> yeah, you wake up and you just, whoo, the rest yeah. of the day is like a breeze. So at 8 a.m., Rajneesh gave, uh, it ranged from 60 to 90 minutes. It was spontaneous. He gave this spontaneous lecture, just depending on how he felt, where he would comment on religion and answer questions from his disciples. And then during the day, there was a variety of meditation and therapies which took place. And one of these therapy groups was called the Encounter Group, which were basically experimental places which allowed for physical aggression and sexual encounters among the participants. So basically, the thought was, um, anytime you encounter somebody or encounter a feeling or an urge, you then act on it. And that's basically what this was. So one former participant reported that he left the ashram with a broken arm after spending eight hours locked in a room with participants wielding and swinging wooden bats. And (laughs) I know (laughs) eventually (laughs) because of this craziness, violence ended with a statement from Rajneesh and the ashram that it had, quote, fulfilled its function. (laughs) <laughs> so now, by the end of the 70s, the Poon Ashram was far too small for the rapid growth and influx of Westerners it was receiving. And even more surprising was maybe the type of talent and intelligence from the members who had been coming. They were from all levels of life, all classes, all members of you know different countries or religions, all levels of like popularity and celebrity. There were tons of Bollywood actors, people from all walks of life, politicians, science, technology, medicine, literally so many different people were drawn to this and so many Westerners, specifically Americans and Europeans. And by 18, nope, not 1800s, nope, 1981, (laughs) this ashram was host to 30,000 visitors per year. So as it grew globally, it was noticed that Rajneesh kind of started to play a little bit more to his audiences and his lectures turned from their traditional purposes to making more like dirty and ethnic jokes to like shock and amuse the guests that came to him. Mm -hmm. Um, So he started to slip in a little bit. It was noticed. Uh, And this same year, a 16-year-old girl named Sheila was appointed to be the personal assistant to Rajneesh. And Mm. she would soon become the favorite of the guru and became more like his advisor and secretary. Eventually, she began to co-run the ashram with Rajneesh and became in control of the millions of dollars that this place was bringing in from their services. So as sheila grew in favor of the gr- the guru rajneesh she was appointed to the job of finding a new place to relocate away from public scrutiny and to find them more space in general because they're running out of it so they looked through india but land use approval was denied by the government As again they didn't really agree with what they were doing both politically and like culturally so they just kind of shut down every chance that there was to expand their land Um, Even more drastically, the government stopped issuing foreign visas to those who intended to go to the ashram. And even more drastic than that, there was a recent change that made this ashram no longer tax exempt, like how churches are, resulting in about $5 million owed. So they needed to leave. Things were not going well for them in India. Um, Other religious groups and government leaders who used to be really friendly with them uh, turned him away, refused to help him. And also a side note. He was being investigated for prostitution, drug trafficking, gold smuggling, money laundering on top of tax evasion. So, you know, there's there's that, too. Um, So with the growing ashram and the Indian government trying to push them out, Sheila, remember this 16 year old, was able to convince Rajneesh that the place that they needed to go was the USA. So what did they do? 
They purchased a 64,000-acre property in Wasco County, Oregon, called Big Muddy Ranch, for $5.75 million. And after 15 years of lecturing and growing his practice, Rajni suddenly took a three-and-a-half-year vow of public silence after Sheila found this property and basically was just like, here, you found this, great, I'm not going to talk publicly now, I'll only talk in private, um, arrange everything, arrange everything for me, arrange the passports, the legal documents, you take care of this. Uh, so now we go to the U.S. of A, baby. Let's so go. Big mu- <laughs> let's go, let's get it. Yeah. <laughs> so Big <laughs> Muddy Ranch was renamed Rancho Rajneesh, and the entire ashram moved to the new commune. And this is this is where things get bad shit crazy, if you can believe it. <laughs> um, so the this this ranch was on two separate counties, and these counties were occupied by conservative Christian families who lived quiet, undisturbed, very sheltered lives. Specifically, the town closest to this ranch was a town called Antelope, and it only had like 40 to 50 residents in total. This town, again, very specifically, still elderly Christian retirees who very much prized their privacy and quietness and solitude. Um, And then, as you can imagine, a sudden influx of thousands upon thousands of red-robed, free-loving, sex-having, rowdy cult (laughs) members and their guru just driving up in a flashy Rolls Royce. It wasn't exactly welcome. Um, So... The locals were very hostile towards these thousands of members just flooding into their town. And immediately, as one does, the local and state law enforcement and the FBI uh, were quick to become very curious because of this sudden influx of people. And basically, almost immediately, months of legal battles ensued. It was basically a civil war with the neighbors and the government. And it was mainly about land land use and permissions, but it was just chaos. So Rajneesh and his appointed leaders were very impatient with the pushback. And they were very insistent on having their demands met. And basically, they were holding these two entire counties hostage with threatening and confrontational behavior. Um, I don't want to say, that, okay, I don't want to paint the Rajneeshis in a bad light, but they also were not innocent in this either. And it doesn't sound like that from the beginning, but then it gets dark. So let's get there. Okay. So with Sheila now as his speaker... In 1986, she organized for the development of the ranch into an independent, self-governing town called Rajneesh Puram in Wasco County. So they just basically made their own town. Um, And with the help of city planners and architects and engineers and commune residents, Rajneesh Puram became complete with its own mail service, law enforcement, fire department, power station, plumbing, roads, shopping centers and malls, houses, a city hall. It even had an airport Jeez. and a large communal meditation hall for them all to Did enjoy. Did they have their own money? <laughs> like their own currency? Yeah. Yes. Oh, my God. So they, so <laughs> they got – oh, so, no, sorry. They didn't have their own currency, but they, <coughs> they used U.S. dollars, but they were getting money from their followers. That's what I thought you meant. Sorry. My, my oh, mistake. Okay. No, you're good. Um, <laughs> So they didn't have their like Rajneesh bucks. They had U.S. dollars, but they had a a shit ton of money from all of their followers. Um, So uh, obviously the town of Antelope was not very pleased. All of the town members would complain that the Rajneeshi's obsession with sex was like appalling and that they could hear their rowdy orgasmic experiences all day. (laughs) And that's a quote. Nice. (laughs) yeah good (laughs) hell yeah brother oh gosh (laughs) i'm so So, a group i know you're i know you're going i I really wish they would have kept the name big muddy ranch i know right it's so good it's it's such a good name and i feel like it fits the nature of their (laughs) organization a bit better it really does it does. Although Rancho Ranch Rajish 
was very short lived, and I would have liked to see that go on for a little bit longer. I, I'm curious to see if they would have themed around like they're not from Mexico. <laughs> they're not. Yeah, they they're did. from India, so like Rancho Rajneesh is just very yeah, it's random. Very it's the, I don't know. I love that. Yes, it, it really is. <laughs> Okay, so they've got this whole freaking town now, and a bunch of these townspeople of Antelope tried to have these structures and buildings destroyed. So in retaliation, Sheila's like, oh, hell no. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to buy more land and all of the available property that I can in the town of Antelope. So basically, they started to slowly... And then very, very quickly overrun this small town of 40 elderly Christian retirees. (laughs) So to avoid being over. Yes, there was only 40. (laughs) Poor people. (laughs) Yes, not good. (laughs) So to avoid being overtaken, the citizens of Antelope held a vote to disincorporate itself so that nobody could like take over it. It would just like kind of dissolve. But it was too late. There were now enough Rajneesh residents to defeat the measure, and they voted it down and took over their small town. Holy shit. The, <laughs> so great. <laughs> the Rajneesh residents voted themselves onto city council and only left one remaining Antelopian. <laughs> and they, <laughs> they even got the town renamed to Rajneesh for a short time because they had the numbers <laughs> in the vote. Why was it only for a short time? <laughs> I think, like, city, like, law, I don't know. I honestly don't know. But, like, I'm sure there might be some legal thing where it it stopped it from being named for a short time. Or maybe they eventually gained the votes back. But I honestly have no idea. I just know it wasn't Rajneesh for long. It got changed back to Antelope. Okay. So, at this point, Rajneesh Param is rolling in the dough. Rajneesh himself has now amassed a total of 93 vehicles, 17 of which were Rolls Royces, and a ton of Rajneesh communities all over the world. So what started in India back as 30,000 members is now half a million members in total today. And these it's half a million people... On. Yes, it is. Madison, why hasn't even stopped? <laughs> What's okay. going on? He has been stopped, but the religion itself is still going on. Like, I shit oh, you not, Jared. <laughs> so these half a million members would flock to Oregon annually for their festival. And obviously this disturbed the, the Antelopians and other community residents. Um, and since... Rajneesh still was not speaking publicly. He would interact with members by driving through like this as a, in a parade, like a public drive through ceremony on his like flashy decked out Rolls Royces. And he would pre-record messages in private to play them for the mass audiences. So I guess it's kind of cheating, but you know, whatever. Um, <laughs> they kept continued to try. They continued trying to expand into the other counties, but these attempts to further expand were repeatedly blocked by state officials. And the Rajneeshi saw their neighbors as bigots. Newspapers referred to them as Sodom and Gomorrah, which if you don't know, is like this very unholy, satanic, sin-loving city in the Bible that was smited. Um, And they called them a, quote, cancer in our midst. And maybe even worse, In the small towns, gun clubs and turkey shoots around Rajneesh Param, um, these residents, Rajneeshis, were being displayed as hunting targets because they wore like these reddish orange robes. And the uh, residents would call them the red rats or the red vermin. So this isn't cool. This is not cool at all. I do not agree with this in the slightest. However... Sheila, the one now publicly running this and speaking for Rajneesh, 
did nothing to try to de-escalate the situation and really just everything to antagonize more. She was very bold and brash in media interviews. She would take every chance that she could to do a media interview just to be bold and brash. She came across as crude, caustic, very, very hostile and defensive. Um, Again, none of that is necessarily bad, but then there are some more things that she does that are not good. So, Remember how I said that there was one surviving Antilopian member of the council? Oh, yeah. So he ends up spying on the Rajneeshis. He collects garbage and discovers incriminating information, like sham marriages to be specific, to get people to stay in the U.S. Uh, Because, you know, visas expire. You can't just stay forever. And this led to the attorney general declaring the city of Rajneesh null and void, citing separation of church and state. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. So (laughs) now we're going to get to the 1984 bioterror attack. Oh, my God. (laughs) Yeah, did you forget about that? Yeah, (laughs) I did, actually. Oh, my God. So there was a bombing. Again, let me rewind. Rajneesh owned a shit ton of property all across the U.S. He had massive amounts of followers. So he had a hotel in Portland, uh, predominantly for his Rajneesh ease, but really for anybody. But a bombing at one of his owned hotels uh, made the commune amp up their security. And the U.S. Uh, government was put on high alert because obviously they're, they're being bombed. Like, th- they're yeah. bringing this bombing into the U.S. That's not good. Um, so Rajneeshis seemed to abandon their pacifist beliefs and were trained in semi-automatic weapons. Residents would practice at the gun range and even serve as bodyguards for the city or the once was city, I guess, and Rajneesh and fellow like leaders of the ashram. So now, because they lost the right to self-govern legally, they can't. They are no longer a city. They can't govern themselves. Sheila tried to figure out exactly how to take over the county elections like they did the city council elections. So, like, she did it with a small town in Antelope. Why couldn't she do it with a county? Homegirl buses unhoused people by the thousands across the country to Oregon for them to live in the commune and register to vote in their favor. (laughs) This is not discreet by any means. So, um, you know, the election commissioner found out and refused to register any new voters. And because these registrations had halted, Sheila came up with a new plan to ensure the votes for herself. So Sheila coordinated an attack alongside Rajneesh Param citizens to infect the salad bars of at least 10 restaurants in the county seat of Wasco County with salmonella in an attempt to (laughs) incapacitate the voting population so that their own candidates would win. <laughs> was this before like mail-in ballots was a thing? Yes, I believe so. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to go to the polls. 751 Ugh. people, including several Wasco County public officials were infected. 45 people were hospitalized. Luckily there were no fatalities, but this is still to this day, 2023 regarded as the single largest biological warfare attack in United <laughs> States history. Jesus Christ. <laughs> so, how I've I've so, never heard of this. I don't how have I never heard of this? I know, this before? right? I know, right? Like, You've never heard of it. It's insane. It's fucking crazy. Oh, okay. So Obviously, they're like, who the fuck could have done this? Oh, Rajneesh (laughs) Param. Looks like none of you guys got sick. So they Uh. immediately suspected them. And local residents turned out in droves on election day just to prevent them from winning any positions. And eventually, the Rajneeshis eventually just withdrew their candidate. And they were just, they just failed. They failed. So um, at the beginning... Rajneesh, whenever he first met Sheila, he coached her on media presence and press coverage and 
proudly announced that Sheila would be speaking on his behalf whenever she took his vow of silence. However, at some point, Sheila started to keep him in the dark and made decisions on her own while claiming they came from him. And everybody knew who was really running things. And this caused a lot of tension in the upper leadership of the commune, and it eventually boiled over. So in 1984, a private meeting was held with Sheila and Rajneesh's personal house staff, and she was reprimanded for the work that she was doing. And um, this was kind of meant to be Rajneesh's turning point, to really get the commune back from what he called a fascist regime. He um, said that... In true communist fashion, sorry, let me rewind that. Um, He called Sheila a fascist, and because he didn't speak publicly, he had all of these things recorded for then to be played on to his audience of followers. Um, But Sheila actually deleted this recorded meeting so that she could edit it and record her own transcription free of any insults of herself labeling her as a communist or a fascist or anything negative about her at all. Mm -hmm. So in September of 18... Fucking hell. 1985, (laughs) Sheila and 15 other leaders abruptly left Rajneesh Param and fled to Europe. And this is it. Rajneesh is like, fuck it. This This is too far. So he breaks his nearly four-year vow of silence to hold a press conference where he addresses the problems they faced and officially labeled Sheila and her associates as a gang of fascists. And he accused them of many crimes and invited, welcomed, I dare say, authorities to investigate. And these crimes were apparently committed without his knowledge, and he claimed to only be enlightened to them after these people had fled. And these crimes included... The attempted murder of his physical, his personal physician, poisonings of public officials in Oregon, wiretapping and bugging within the commune and within Rajneesh's own home, and potentially this lethal bioterror attack. So as the U.S. authorities are looking into Sheila's home, they found a system of underground rooms and tunnels and wiretapping networks Dude. all throughout the commune. And they were able to find a laboratory and trace the salmonella back to this laboratory. <laughs> they found the bacteria here. It had been grown here for She's a fact. like a fucking super villain. Like, <laughs> he's got Actually, underground tunnels and labs and <laughs> chemical. Just, oh my God. She's just she's like a Bond villain. <laughs> she is. <It's> crazy. <laughs> they even found sedatives which Sheila would use to sedate Rajneesh when he was pushing back or not agreeing with her. So she was just like fucking sedating this guy. They found (laughs) evidence that Sheila was responsible for a fire that happened in a county planning department. So basically this this office held the files for these long-running disputes and legal issues with the Rajneeshis, and she just fucking set it on fire. It just just destroyed all the files. (laughs) Uh, And remember how I mentioned that Rajneesh was in poor health way back when he was in Mumbai? Well, it's only gotten worse, and he's needed personal physicians to help him. So to spy on Rajneesh, Sheila wiretaps his room and tells him that his doctor is planning to kill him. But in reality, she was planning on killing his doctor (laughs) and his girlfriend because she thought that they were a threat. She also plotted to kill the U.S. state attorney in Portland, and uh, they were more government officials on her hit list and she would just very openly discuss uh taking people out who were in her way eventually oh my God. we're almost done eventually <laughs> sheila was arrested in west germany in october 1985 she was extradited to the u.s in february on charges of immigration fraud and attempted murder and rajneesh was obviously not happy with what sheila turned his commune into denounces <laughs> her for it um and most members were very, very loyal to him. They were unhelpful to the FBI. They did not want to turn on Rajneesh. But there was one single leak. This was a former mayor of Rajneesh Param, who is now currently in witness protection. <laughs> and <laughs> okay, this person was able to lead Rajneesh and seven of his followers 
sorry, this this person was able to lead police to Rajneesh and seven of his followers with 35 counts of conspiracy to defraud the U.S. Um, Rajneesh entered an Alfred p- plea on his attorney's advice. And if you don't know what that is, it's basically a cop out. It's a guilty plea where the suspect is, does not admit that he is guilty, but concedes that there is enough evidence to convict them. So it's kind of like, it's kind of like making a deal or um, bargaining reducing with the sentence. police. Exactly. Yeah. You, you know, reducing I did the something sentence. wrong. Um, so he was oh, he was only given a ten year sentence. What? Uh, five years. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> kidding. <laughs> Oh my God. Five years probation and only a four hundred thousand dollar fine. This man is rolling in the dough. He could afford How long that was and more. Sheila arrested for. <laughs> uh, she might actually have died in prison. To be quite frank, I don't actually know. Because I feel like her sentence should be a lot more. I mean, obviously he's the one who's starting it, and you know, controlling the assets. To <laughs> she was degree, sentenced but... to twenty years in federal prison released on good behavior after serving only 39 months and oh she God. received a fine of $470,000 and it was only okay so she pled good guilty behavior. which would reduce her sentence and, yeah i know right she it was only to attempted murder charge and the bioterror attack those were her only, only two charges murder. only bioterror yeah that's just a slap yes, on wrist yes just that well. you know it's fine <laughs> So he also had to agree to leave the United States and he was happy to do this. He did not want to be there anymore. Whenever he returned to India, he was given a hero's welcome. Everybody was like crowding the streets. Everybody was so excited to have him back and he could not be more excited to be back and be out of the U S with his health constantly failing. He would continue his practices as much as he could. And the ashram went uh, underwent a massive overhaul. Basically, he chilled the fuck out in his old age. <laughs> and it now looks like a normal ashram than it did before. The red robes cool. were abandoned. Therapy sessions and exercises were meant to lead into actual meditation. <laughs> um, but at the age of 58, Rajneesh died in 1990. Um at his ashram in India and his followers gathered dressed in white robes to celebrate his life and he was cremated and his ashes lie in a mausoleum and the epitaph reads never born never died only visited this planet earth between December 11th 1939 nope 1931 and January 19th 1990 oh and the one last thing I forgot to mention was that now, uh, the ranch has turned into a, a Christian, like, missionary youth center where they preach abstinence. So it's a full 180 from everything it used to be. And that is the true story of the Oregon Trail. Wow. <laughs> My God, they should do, like, a documentary or, like, a movie or something. They did do That's a documentary. Cr- oh, did they? Okay. It was it's yeah, <laughs> it was called Wild Wild Country, I think. And it, I got mixed reviews. So like some people said that they, it was like really really slow, mm-hmm. um, but obviously it uncovered all of this shit. So yeah, there's that. <laughs> Damn, I thought you were about to tell me that <laughs> Sheila was the one for the reason, like for, for his declining health. Like she was secretly like micro poisoning him somehow you know there's no proof of it but i would not doubt it in the slightest i would absolutely buy that i mean she was sedating him what else might she be slipping him like i don't know honestly anthrax pills or something (sighs) wow So I'm doing something a little different this time. Um, it is, of course, spooky season. 
and my fiance and I have been watching a lot of scary movies. I enjoy scary movies uh, to a point. I'm someone who very much loves scary movies, but also, like, I'm going to lay in bed after I watch that, and I'm going to, like, (laughs) be afraid. Just have nightmares. Not nightmares, but it's hard for me to get to sleep. Like, we just watched Rose Red recently, and I had trouble. I'm still having I love trouble. Rose Red. I've never seen it. It's very good. It's, it's long. It's so good. I mean, it's... It's very it's, long. It's like a mini series. But, uh... Oh, it's a show? Yeah. It's... Okay. If you've got four and a half hours... Oh, it's by yeah. Stephen King. It's... Yeah, and usually whenever he has his books and he really wants to do them justice, he'll make them into mini series like the original It with Tim Curry or oh, yeah. the The Best Shining. I hate the Stanley Kubrick one, but the, the there's what? another Shining. So does a, he. A and mini- Stephen King would get along. Yes. Uh, yes. So he this one um did, did you watch Little Rascals? With the movie Little Rascals? Yes. Yeah. The kid who goes, nah uh that's his name. Uh-huh. He plays uh the boy. Not uh Torrance. Who's the boy? What's his name? Jack oh, um, no, what's his name? It's not, it's not Jackie, it's not Tommy, it's not Timmy. I forget his name. Anyway, he Toby? plays a little I know boy. His, um, his friend's name is Tony, that's all I know. Fred Rum. Yeah, that Fred really. Rum. Yeah, but it's really, really good. So fuck Stanley Kubrick. Watch the better one. Uh, okay. Stephen King does them well. <laughs> Danny. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Danny. Danny, Danny, Danny Torrance. Torrance. I knew it ended with like an I E or an, a Y. Yeah. So I've been. It's it looks dated, but it still looks so creepy. And I just I'm having trouble falling asleep, but. Um. There is nothing scarier to me than when a horror movie starts out with the title card that says based on a true story. Mm-hmm. So I have here 12 movies. Some of them are based on a true story and some of them aren't. And I'm going to... I'm doing three at a time so we can chill. And, like, talk about them a little bit. But I'm going to give you three movies, and then I want you to tell me which one you think is based on a true story. So, to start off... So, only one of them will be true? Not necessarily. Oh, okay. Um, So, starting off, we've got The Ring, Nightmare on Elm Street, and Halloween. Halloween. Wait, are we supposed to vote right now? (laughs) Yeah, yeah, you tell me. Okay. <laughs> so the Ring, Halloween, Halloween and, I... and Nightmare on Elm Street. Yes. I'm going to say The Ring. Okay, so Madison says Halloween, Jared says The Ring, and they are both yeah. wrong. We, we are guessing. <laughs> what? The ones that are based Freddy off Kruger? of real stories? Yes. The film was... How? Ins- I'm getting to it. The film was inspired by several newspaper articles printed in the Los Angeles Times in the 70s, about Hmong refugees who, after fleeing to the United States because of war and genocide in Laos, Cambodia, and Vietnam, suffered disturbing nightmares and refused to sleep, and some of these men died in their sleep soon after. Jeez. Oh my God. Like, out of fear? It doesn't. Heart no failure? one knows. Nobody knows. I was looking into it just, earlier. They just and, died. Yeah. Like, most of the men oh would gosh. be found dead, like, in the morning. Um, but those who were found while the death was occurring, their heart rate was so high and that could have been attributed to a lot of different things. So nobody, it's still a mystery today. Nobody's really sure what happened. I believe earlier when I read it, it was like 180 some men all together. Dear Lord. Oh my gosh. So Freddy Krueger is like, what, is 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 that what that he's from? Is that Nightmare on Elm Street? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. One, two, so Freddy's coming for you. Three, four, so better does, lock your door. Where does that character fit in? Like, how, did they have visions of this thing? Or? He's probably just the part of the story. Like, I will say, like, 
anytime you watch a, a horror movie and it says based on a true story, it's a grain of salt type of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Very rarely, especially even the movies that seem very like this could happen. Realistic. They're still dramatized. Yes. Um. So, I I'm sure that the nightmare like what could possibly happen in that situation is Freddy came first and then they were trying to figure out how to put him into something like where to fit him in somewhere yeah and then they see the story and then it goes it com- comes from there so that's okay. i mean i don't know for sure obviously i'm not west craven but <laughs> um he needed he needed plot armor yeah there's a fucking fly fun fact Sorry. did you know that originally west craven was not going to pick Johnny Depp to be in Nightmare on Elm Street. He asked his teenage daughter which one she liked, and she picked Johnny Depp. And he's like, what? That grease bag? He looks like a grease monkey. But she's like, no, Dad, he's so dreamy. And that's how he was chosen. I've also... I think This is going to be a tough segment for me, because I haven't seen Nightmare on Elm Street or The Ring. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna Jared. I'll be struggle. quite frank with you. I haven't seen and I'm gonna get the judged. ring or no, you're not. I haven't seen the ring or Halloween. Honestly, um, I just know what they're about. Halloween's Mike Myers, right? Mm-hmm. The whole Halloween series. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I've yeah. Seen those. Yeah, I tried to pick iconic movies where I could. Yeah, some of them um, are a little less well known. Um, but if you want me to explain them, I will. Just ask me questions. Yeah. Ask me anything. Ask me anything. You know? All right. You so. Read it AMA. <laughs> the next set is The Conjuring, Lake Mungo, and The Grudge. Ooh, I do know this one. I know The Conjuring is. It's true. Yeah. Lake Mungo? I don't know the. Uh, I don't know what that is. What is it? And then The Grudge. Yeah, I think. I, think it's I don't just know the either conjuring. of those. What are those two, Buff Buff? Um, well, I know the grudge is like that weird, like long black hair girl. Yes, she just, is like, a thing of my creepy. nightmares. Mm-hmm. I hate girls with long hair. I hate them so much. Not like There's one of those in the ring too. Yeah, I hate. I won't watch. I won't watch those ones or The Exorcist, and they all have girls with long hair. So it's just a thing now. Yeah. I try not to watch scary movies that feature girls with long hair. Um, no, you guys are right. It is The Conjuring is the true story. Um, it is inspired by the case files of paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren and also the accounts of the Perrin family who lived in this house. Um... The Perrin family has come out and said after The Conjuring that, of course, there are some discrepancies and some over-dramatic, dr- uh, what, huh? over-dramatization of events. But like I said earlier, everything is dramatized. It, you know? Yeah. yeah. Showbiz, baby. Yeah. <laughs> also, I uh, highly recommend Lake Mungo. It is, it's a movie that if you watched it, you'd think it was real. Like. What is that? It is a um documentary style film about a girl who uh dies and then her ghost keeps appearing in family photos Ooh. oh shit and there's a Thank lot you. a lot more to it than that but that is the basic premise and i think it's fantastic it is haunting i think about that movie a lot I highly recommend it. I think it's on Amazon Prime. It's so good. It's just scary enough that it'll, like, it's perfect for October spooky Mm -hmm. season. But it's not, I would say, like, it's not too scary. So, like... Haley, I've got a movie recommendation for you. Yes. When we're done with this. Okay. Or I can do it right now. Do it right now. I love love learning about movies. Recommend it. I, I talked to Madison about this a couple episodes ago. Have you seen Skinamarink? 
No, we were going to watch it the other night, but then I was like, nothing's happening, so we turned it off. Madison, did you watch Skinnamarink like I told you to? I did not watch Skinner. Jared, uh. the pictures enough. The pictures were enough, Jared. Like, no, I'm afraid not, if I watch that, I will you... never sleep again. You, well, okay, you have to understand. I had to watch that all by myself, okay? I wanted Sammy to watch it with me, but she fell asleep. <laughs> and I was like, okay, well, it's on. I'm watching it. And now I'm traumatized, but it's so great that I don't even, I'm not even bothered by it. I will watch it's it such this a weekend. good scary movie. I promise you, I will watch it this weekend. You and have will, to watch it cry before whenever. Halloween. We'll give it another go. Okay, I will do that. Just... Yeah, stuff happens. It's very slow burn, but it's okay. like top 10 scary movies, top five scary movies for me. It's great. Okay, I'll watch it. Great. I mm -hmm. will. I promise. This... I want like a written review as well. <laughs> a written report. This is your homework. I get one at like two in the morning. I'm like, Jared. <laughs> Close my eyes. I need need a plot. So analysis. this next set is *Malignant*, *Gerald's Game*, and *Texas Chainsaw Massacre*. Ooh. You're gonna have to Gerald's explain game. *Malignant*, and I don't know what *Gerald's Game* is, but Gerald's I know it's *Texas fucked. Chainsaw Massacre*. What is that? Oh, it's just. It's a really weird premise. Haley can explain it, but I think as far okay, so it was Gerald's Game, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and what was the first one? Malignant. Malignant. I don't think I've seen that one. Uh, mm -mm. And I haven't seen Texas Chainsaw Massacre either, but I think that's the true one. And Madison, you said Texas Chainsaw as well? Yeah, is there only one? Only one Texas Chainsaw Massacre? No, one is there true. only one? Oh, yeah, one true. One. Texas Chainsaw Massacre is right. Okay, cool, 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 cool. I just copied. What are the other ones that. about? So, *Malignant* <laughs> is about this woman that has like an evil tumor, basically. Um, I actually haven't seen that one, but I've watched the kill count on it, and it seems fucking insane. Yeah. It's not a tumor. <laughs> it's not a tumor. And then I love that movie. Gerald's Game. I'm surprised you don't know Gerald's Game, Madison. It's a Stephen King, no adaptation. Really? Yeah. Um, I've never even heard of it. The. I thought I've seen every Stephen King movie. It's really gory. Is it based off of? Is it what? Gerald. I didn't know if the book was the same. Yeah, it's the same name. Gerald's Game. I've the... literally never heard of this woman is like so it's about this woman who's like tied to a bed like for sex fun sex fun mm -hmm. yeah sex fun <laughs> for, for sex fun <laughs> for, for, <laughs> and then her husband her <laughs> husband Gerald dies um before she can be oh, like wait, unlocked wait, wait. wait this was um Oh, there's another Stephen King movie or Stephen King book that's like that. Tommy Knockers, maybe? No, I don't think it's Tommy. Knockers. Oh, I definitely. I don't know if it's Tommy Knockers, but I definitely there. I know a book that is like, maybe I do know Gerald's Game. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, it's done by Mike that's Flanagan, awful. who I love. She starts hallucinating and shit. Yeah, it. I've heard it's it's f fucking crazy. It is. It's a good movie, though. It's. But yeah, I need to watch that this pretty season. Pretty shocking. Alrighty, and then the last three that I have are Scream, Child's Play, and The Birds. Oh, uh, Scream. I think it's Child's Play. I think it's Scream. Plot twist: You're both right. Play. The Birds oh, is also that's right. <gasps> Yo. All three of them are really? based on true stories, yes. Wow. Scream is inspired by a no! rash of real-life murders committed by a serial killer in Gainesville, Florida. Child's Play is based on Robert the Doll, which we have covered here on this show once before. And The Birds is based on an event that took place in Capitola, California on August 18th, 1961, really? when residents awoke to a scene that seemed straight out of a horror movie. Hordes of seabirds were dive bombing their homes, crashing into cars, <gasps> and spewing half-digested anchovies onto lawns. Ew. Uh, that 
<laughs> Honestly, out of all three of those, the Yuck. birds is what freaks me out the most. That movie traumatized me as a child. The end scene where she goes in the attic fucking nightmares it's like the, the telephone booth where she's in the booth and they keep like ramming up against the booth tippy hedron love her but hot damn that the things that the woman had to go through during that movie she had actual birds yes thrown at her yes like dead birds or live birds i think they no, were alive. real birds like, real fucking birds just like chucked at her. No. Like some of those scratches that she had were real. It was the oh, 60s. No. Birds were actually this was pecking before, her. This was Animal before they cared about human rights. Literally before everything. Yeah. That makes me think of all the stuff that um Oh shit. What's her name from Wizard of Oz? Uh Judy Garland. Judy the Garland. The snow was yeah. asbestos. They put her through so much awful shit in that movie oh my gosh and i awful. watched it for the first time this year and like i knew <gasps> all of that going into it uh, and i was i couldn't enjoy it it's supposed to be this like fan like this fantastical wonderland of whimsy and magic and in the back of my mind my like they movies. that dog died because someone stepped on it and they had to get a new dog what did you yeah. know the N tin man also almost died yeah from the paint he, it was like actual aluminum paint, it was like real paint. aluminum, and the original Tin Man was allergic to it, and he got it in his lungs and developed a severe infection, so they replaced him with who you see in a movie today. All of the people who were wearing makeup, ha like, they had to use yes. that real thick lead aluminum yes. paint. Yes. There's a myth, I think it's just a myth, that in the one scene you can About see, so yeah. Yeah. See what? Um, there's a old legend surrounding the Wizard of Oz that in the scene where Dorothy, Scarecrow, and the Tin Man are about to head off toward um, the Emerald City, you can see a munchkin, like one of the munchkins went and hung themselves in the backdrop. <gasps> and I think yeah, it's, like, oh my gosh, trees. I think it's 90, like, I think people are like 90, 99% sure that it's not I, true and that it's just a big bird. No. But, uh. Yeah. A big bird. It. But they did take make the trouble of, like, editing that scene out in future releases, I'm pretty sure. Like, I'm pretty sure really? they did something with I it. Think, yeah. I think when they re released the film, it was just brightened a ton. Yeah. So you could actually see the features of the bird. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. There's some pretty convincing. Like I don't know. We may never know. Jeez, Louise. We may never know. But anyway, those are my movies. That was fun. I like that. I love that so much. Thank you, Duffa. You're welcome. Um, and now that. you all have new movies to go and watch if you haven't seen. Yay! You'll have to put the whole list in the Discord because I already forget. Oh, don't which worry. Which ones I'm supposed to watch? Oh yeah, put those in the and um, we'll add Skinamarink and the original Shining or the Better Shining. I'll I'll, <laughs> I'll put a list and I'll I'll put it in the on social media for everyone to watch for cool. Halloween. I've got a little bite-sized story to end us off this evening. Hell yeah. So to start off, have either of you ever been, like, to a lake, like, a, like on a boating excursion or fishing? Yes. Just hanging out, swimming at a lake? Uh, not swimming. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And it just kind of relatively went off without any issues. You know, you had fun, maybe had a picnic or whatever, had a fun time yeah okay yeah so <laughs> most people probably have at some point gone there gone to a lake you know either fishing or kayaking or canoeing anything like that um but i am going to tell you about one of the most 
the deadliest one of the deadliest lakes in the United States. It's called Lake Lanier. Mm. It's in it's in Georgia. Have you heard of it, Haley? Yeah. But seven hundred people since it was created in nineteen fifty six have died in this lake. Oh my so gosh. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be going through its history here. So Lake Lanier is, and this is going to be super short, but it's a man-made reservoir that was built in the 1950s for recreation, flood control, and power generation. The lake was named after the Georgia poet and songwriter Sidney Lanier. Before the lake was built, it was home to lush and fertile farmland that would soon be turned over to the U.S. Army Corps of, en of Engineers, who offered to buy over 56,000 acres of farmland from over 700 families. But no amount that they offered could ever compare to what that land was worth to them. Generations of blood, sweat, and tears would soon be washed away into oblivion as hundreds of locals watched in 1956 as history vanished before their eyes. So think about what's all underneath the water at this point. You have thousands of acres of farmland, you have barns, you have bridges, you have cemeteries with marked and unmarked graves that by the time they finished building everything, they couldn't possibly get it all cleared out. So there's still plenty of uncaptured things below the surface of the water. So I was going to say, this is also like Georgia too. So, I mean, could it have been like plantations where slaves were mm -hmm. as well? Yeah. Oh so like gosh. before, before then too, yeah, there was a lot of um, plantation land and everything like that. Um, but most of what was going to be considered dangerous to the many new watercraft that would be traversing the lake was removed. So most, if not all of the trees, those barns and bridges that I mentioned before, and mm -hmm. the, um, the gravestones. Obviously, they didn't take the time to dig up the graves. They just wanted to get the stones out of the way. Yeah. They did everything that they could to um, make sure that they removed all of the marked burial sites so that they still had something you know, to provide to the families. But hundreds, if not thousands, of unmarked burials from even like, you know, Civil War area, era to even, mm -hmm. you know, time before that just bodies upon bodies upon bodies underneath the surface of this lake. So the limited capabilities made it very probable that unanticipated finds of human remains would be possible once, you know, the water starts eroding away the surface of the dirt and yeah. gravel or whatever. So obviously with that much pent up like rage and frustration and anger, felt by the farmers and you know everybody else that had been living on that land before some spooky things started to happen so over the years divers at this lake have reported very creepy sightings beneath the murky waters some tell stories of freakishly large catfish that are as big as a volkswagen um mm. and there's a bunch of different videos yeah just like giant fish and i mean most of them don't really have too much claim, but, you know, it's mostly just eyewitness reports. But there's Still a ton like of YouTube that. videos. Yeah, that's it's kind of concerning thinking that all these people are dying in this lake and there's these giant catfish. I don't know. That would freak me out. Um, there's a lot of YouTube videos showing, like, sunken house houseboats and other random piles of debris. But just between, like, 1994 and current year over 200 people have died in drownings and boating incidents and other like freak disasters at the lake um holy shit yeah so just really unexplainable things like normally drownings are like a common thing at the beach where you can get swept away by the tide or you know there's dangerous aquatic life near the shore but at a lake you'd think most people are relatively careful and know what they're doing. Um, mm -hmm. Another part of it is because it's such a popular tourist destination. Many visitors don't really follow protocol or rules. You know, they're drinking and driving boats, um, getting into accidents, or they're just not being careful when you know they go out into deep water. 
So in 2017, longtime diver Buck Buchanan told local media that he sometimes felt body parts in the lake during his many excursions. You reach out into the dark and you feel a random arm or a leg and it doesn't move. So Uh. with all of these deaths that are happening... Obviously, it's harder to recover the bodies if they're sinking below the surface. I hate that. So they just, you know, at some point they get, you know, like those bodies that get. Yeah. What's what's the term for it? They just get like. Waterlogged. I don't know. Waterlogged. Like yeah, but they eventually like bloated. Yeah, that's that's what it was. Like get bloated and then they come up to the surface. That's basically what's uh, happening hmm. with all these people that are drowning. And not just people really who gross. are dying, but people who are coming up from, like, the graves and, oh, yep. my gosh. Yeah, That's it's really gross. gross. It's really creepy. It's a haunted but lake. still has not affected the lake's popularity with about 12 million visitors oh uh, just God. last year. Lake Lanier was Jeez. one of the most visited core-built lakes in the nation. You won't catch me there. So. That's for sure. Yeah, some of the pictures just have a shit ton of boats, like, on the shore most people seem to be like aware of how dangerous it can be so they're like you know just chilling out on the beach but lake linear size and popularity contribute to all these different tall tales and its high visitation rate so one of lake linear's most popular urban legends involves a car wreck so not just drownings or boating accidents but also automobiles like careening Mm -hmm. off the bridges into the water (gasps) Um, According to the story, a Ford sedan carrying two women careened off a bridge in April 1958, just two years after the lake was finished construction, and tumbled into the water. And some say the ghost of one of the women, dubbed the Lady of the Lake, wanders the bridge at night in a blue dress, lost and restless. Mm. No thanks. So... Yeah, it's a very spooky Same. ghost tale. And then there's some other statistics that they go into with um, the different causes of death that occur at the lake. I mentioned before, boating collisions mostly due to drunken visitors who aren't following proper boating protocols that's still operating a vehicle. Um, yeah. Drownings to electrocutions at one point. Someone got electrocuted. So just really random shit that happens. Oh my gosh. Yeah. One particularly gruesome event was on Christmas Day in 1964. Um, Another automobile accident. Driver lost control of their car while crossing a bridge very similar to Lady of the Lake. I'm not sure if it was the same bridge, but the car then flipped into the lake where five children and two adults drowned. (gasps) Oh my gosh. Really, really sad. Yeah. More recently, just like five months ago, the body of a 61-year-old man was recovered by Hall County authorities on March 25th. So, like, people are still dying in this lake, like, very regularly. Oh my gosh. um, On a very frequent scale, like, every single year. In 2018 and 2019, there were eight drownings each. In 2020, oh there were gosh. seven drownings, f- um, four drownings in 2021, six in 2022, and then 48 additional deaths, which were attributed to boating fatalities, and then seven drownings in 2023. So it's a very consistent thing that people are going to this lake just incredibly populated with tourists and visitors and just dying. So... There's no life there's no lifeguards on duty at all in these areas, so authorities recommend to swim at your own risk. With all yeah. of these fatalities, like are there no other precautions that are being put up? Either like how about putting some lifeguards there or like maybe making some making it so that cars can't just drive off. I don't know. Well, so there's 20 designated swimming areas around this body of water okay but because it's like i I don't know if it's because it's like a technically a military based function like it's a dam that's meant for flood control like they can't really okay put jurisdiction on that body of water 
to have lifeguards okay. posted there to protect people. Like, it's mostly just, you know, people show up in their boats and they're there to have a good time and they just get really careless and yeah. drown. Okay. All right. But it's just uh. wild to me how many people have died at this lake. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So that's what I got for I you. I didn't know about that. Yeah, that's Georgia's good. a pretty scary place. Um, that was, like, one of the last things I talked about, too, is the Andrew Lowe house. But... <gasps> oh, yeah. Jared, speaking of. Okay, so remember how I said that I went to New Orleans and yeah. I took a bunch of pictures of the Did you look at your pictures? Cemeteries? I oh. did. Did you see Okay, anything? so I didn't get anything crazy, but... The very first picture that I took, it's just all white. Like, Ooh. I, I, there's no point in showing it to you because it's just literally all white. Like, it's like a Polaroid didn't get developed. And it was taken at 937. And mm -hmm. it was taken in succession with, like, I have a bunch of other pictures from it from the same time. 937, Ooh. the same day of the cemetery. So I have, like, four back-to-back -back pictures all taken the same cemetery the same place and there's just this one and it's just all white i love that that is so cool it's crazy it's crazy are you are you convinced now do you now that you have like, I, evidence I, i'm convinced that's that so it's cool something i want okay so i really want to go to gettysburg since it's only like an hour away from me and i really want to go mm. on a ghost tour there i i this freaked me out, and like I, I don't want to say I'm. They didn't want you to like, see of something. My, ra my ra I know my rational brain is thinking like, well, it could have just been a glitch, but like literally, there's four back-to-back -back pictures, all of the same place, the same time, the same day. I have the details right here in front of me. It's mm -hmm. at 9:37 p.m., so it is pitch black. The other pictures are like pitch black; you can hardly see anything in them, and there's just yeah. that one, and it's just. Stri not like a flash went off and it's white no it's just all white like the picture it took was white and there's absolutely no way that it would have i would have taken a picture of anything white because it was so dark i wonder do you remember whenever you took the picture when you looked at it was it white at that point or was it just was it normal i don't remember that's the thing i don't it, it remember might have i developed I, into that yeah i think so from what I remember, I remember being disappointed because I didn't see anything in the pictures that I got. So from mm -hmm. as far as I remember, I, it, it wasn't like that before. It was only whenever I went through, I'm trying to clean out my Google Drive because I have a lot of storage used up and uh -huh. uh, trying to get rid of pictures. And that's one of them. It's just a white picture. I wouldn't have saved that or like I, I, I would have noticed yeah. if there was a white picture pretty spooky but yeah i just had to tell you i was very excited when I that saw it. makes me so happy yeah i love shit like that that's so cool i know i know Ugh. maybe i'll go to gettysburg one of these one of these spooky weekends and take a tour do it All right. Well, thank you guys. You, uh, Haley and Jared, for being on here. This was so fun. I loved having yeah. you both on here at once. Thank you. Um, thank you to everyone who has listened. We have made it to one year. Thank you for your support and your love. And um, yeah, I don't know what to say besides that. If you want to follow us for another crazy year and more stories, uh, you can find us on Facebook and Instagram and maybe threads. I'm thinking of making a threads account. Um, is that the, uh, is that the Instagram offshoot? Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. 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 Cool. I've been getting, it's, it's been popping up in my feed for Instagram. Like, Hey, you should check out threads. And I'm like, you know what? This looks pretty sick. So I might do that. <laughs> um, but yeah. Or send us an email at myexistentialcrisispodcast at gmail.com. If you haven't done it yet, like, uh, and follow, leave a comment and a rating. Um, and give love to Haley and Jared because they're wonderful human beings. But, yeah, thank you. 
Thanks, everybody. See ya. Bye. Bye.